what is the problem here? And he gave me this verse in Proverbs that says, despise not your mother when she is old. Well, I pondered that one, and he made me to understand he's talking about our mother church that we've been brought up in. And now she is getting old and ready to pass away as we come into a new age. Don't despise your mother when she's old. She was good to you. She looked after you. She, she nurtured you. She fed you the milk bottle. She did all that she knew to do. So now that um, you have got her side and you're being taught of the father, don't turn and despise her. And this is what was happening. He was despising his mother when she was old. And that created a lot of... Um, you know, anger. He didn't even want to be called a Christian. And he's in a, uh, in a ministry. He doesn't want to be called a Christian. And so you can tell that there's something behind that. I wondered, what is causing this bitterness? And the Lord showed me that's what it was. It was the bear, though. No, the bear. It was rejection. And so I, uh, I didn't know how to confront this or how to, how to deal with it. But um, I was at a place uh, with him one time. We were ministering at the same place. And I woke up in the morning and the Lord said, uh, brought this man to me. He said, I want you to honor him. Okay, Lord. I didn't know how he wanted me to do this. But I said, you show me how to honor him. I'll be glad to honor him. And that evening after he spoke, he asked um, several people, you know, for questions and so on. And he was going to close the questions. And I remembered something I had seen through the day, just a little flash in the spirit. I had seen myself put my hand on his heart. And I was praying on behalf of the church system that he would... Uh, asking his forgiveness for how they had treated him. I'd forgotten about that. It just came so quickly. And so the Lord said, this is how you will honor him. So I went up and I, um, I thanked him for what he was doing in the body of Christ, what he meant to all of us and, and for his ministry. And then I said, the Lord shows me that you have, um, have suffered a lot of rejection from the church system. And I said, the Lord wants you to be healed of that. So I put my hand on his heart and I said, I'm going to stand for... Um, the church system for all those who have reviled you through the years and and given you such a hard time about what you believe i'm going to be them and i'm going to ask your forgiveness on their behalf and then i, I then i prayed for the healing of his heart and uh, man this is about bloom away <laughs> and I, I know it it blessed and encouraged him i don't know if it fully cured his problem but at least the lord was making positive steps for me to have confronted him and um, put some law on him or you shouldn't do that or whatever, that would not have, have done anything. But I just wanted to share that with you, that the Lord may ask you to say a Daniel's prayer, to say, I have sinned, or take someone's place. I, on behalf of this person, I apologize to you. Maybe they never will apologize to you, but on their behalf, I want to make this right so that you can be free, so that you can be healed of that. Does that make a lot of sense? Isn't that good? This is part of our new kind of praying in the land. Does, yeah. That, doesn't that require that you identify with, with that, for instance, that lineage? I mean, Daniel was identifying with the lineage of, of, of all of Israel and included okay. himself in it, isn't that? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm not um, concerned with uh, the substance of Daniel's prayer, it's only for the fact that he uh, didn't just talk about the people. He included himself, he I and my himself. people. Yeah, I and my people have sinned. And so I, I would uh, apologize and say, on, um, on behalf of this people, I confess on their behalf that they have wronged you by treating you in this way. And I ask you to forgive them because they knew not what they did. And um, what can he do? You know, it's just right there before his face. And there's a, a body put to this that words and an entreaty. And so I think, um, uh, I remember one night I was in a meeting and a young man was there and um, he obviously didn't want to be there very badly. I could tell. You can tell by body language and uh, the look of the eyes and so on. His wife really wanted to be there, but he didn't want to be there. And I don't know. I, I'm a confronter, I guess. And I just asked him something. I wanted, I don't know to this day what I asked him, but it's just sudden, the lid blew. And he told me everything how he felt. <laughs> and he said he'd been, you know, this older man had instructed him in some of the deeper things of the Lord. And, and he was, as a young person, you know, he was so thrilled. And he just kind of half-worshipped this, this mentor that he had. And um, then I guess that man kind of um, went wayward. And um, this young man was so disappointed, so uh, heartbroken, that he, um, he just turned away from the Lord because this person 
let him down. And he told me this. He said, well, you know, I can't trust anything that any of you are saying because this man let me down. Well, I started to cry. And his wife started to cry. And I thought, Lord, this isn't too dignified, but I couldn't help it. And I, as I prayed, the Lord told me, he said, I want you to wash his feet. So his wife got some a basin and water, and I washed his feet. His wife washed his feet. Every person in the room came and knelt down and washed his feet and cried over him and said they were so sorry that one of the brethren had, um, had wounded him, had disappointed him, had um, not shown a godly example that would cause him to turn against the word and against the Lord. So we all did this. It was most amazing. And he's trying hard to keep his composure, but that wasn't really easy to do. He finally broke down too and, and wept. And I knew the Lord did something that night, but um, we had to just humble ourselves. And uh, first some of the men, be well, I'm just crying, and I didn't know why I'm crying. Some of the men tried to um, entreat him, like um, kind of smarten him up, you know, uh, convince him that he ought not to think that way. Man, that was getting nowhere. He was just getting riled under the collar. Then the Lord said, I want you to wash his feet. That was the thing that broke his heart. <laughs> and it broke all of us, too, because, well, oh, Lord, your ways are so much higher than our ways. They were going to contend with the mind, you know? And the Lord said, no, get to the heart. So we washed his feet, and we all apologized for the brother that had done this, and, and we asked the Lord to help us that we wouldn't be an offense to him, you know? So, so part of it, so I've yeah. always been taken, and one of the lessons we've given our children is to the, the, the beautiful uh, humility of Daniel. I mean, that's yes. these years ago. He, he was including himself. But yes. don't you think that when we pray that way, that we're not just saying, we pray we won't be a semi rock I mean, haven't we? Isn't that part yes. of praying? It's the catharsis of knowing we have hurt people. Yes. We have let them down. Yes. So it's not just an attempt at humility. It's not just an attempt to be a proxy. Aren't we also yes. realizing yes. that we, these humans can't help yes. us that are down? You know, when, when, uh, and, 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 and so I would say it was more than just all these things, because haven't you been, if some of the first two feel mm -hmm. sometimes, I just feel like yeah. I know you so well, <laughs> sometimes I used to say, oh, how could I ever make up for all the hurt I've done, yeah. and all the people I've hurt. Yeah, and I thought that this one too, a child, say a child eight or nine years old, is not strong enough to overcome the bear of rejection on his own. And uh, maybe it's rejection in another form, maybe he has, he has a jealousy. This is just another thing he sure, just Oh, he figures his uh, brother gets all the breaks. The parents favor his brother. So then, to scold him for that, it doesn't help. You more or less have to stand in his shoes and think of all the times you felt somewhere and just pray and pray and pray. Because uh, you know, it's like you're taking his burden on you. Yeah. I think that one of the words that you're saying mm -hmm. out is the shouldn't that we give each other, those are going to go. You yes. shouldn't feel this way. Yes, you yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. And I can just feel it when you're talking about right. it, you know? Right. You, you might say every family is contented with this. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. 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 And I believe as we learn to know the Lord's heart, we're going to understand why people act like they do. We're going to know their heart. When we know their heart, there's no way that we can hold anything against them. Oh, no way. The Lord spoke to me one time. I feel to share this. Bill and I had been um, fasting and, no, oh, maybe not fasting, but we just kind of set aside a, a week or two to just spend, especially praying with the Lord. And when we started, I had a little vision, and I saw the Lord with his arms like this, and we were in his arms, held close to his bosom. We were like dolls, about the size of dolls. I thought, wow, that's great to be close to the bosom of the Lord, but I wonder what it means. He didn't say a word. I didn't know what he meant. So we did our week of prayer or so. And as we were about the last day, I saw this again held close to his bosom. But something else happened. I saw us melt right in to the Lord. And I found myself looking out from being in the Lord. I looked out with his eyes. I was seeing things as he saw them. I was hearing with his ears, hearing how he heard things. And I was understanding things from his heart. Wow, did that ever feel wonderful. And then he said, uh, in this church age, this last 2,000 years, he said, I've been teaching my people what it means to have Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
Now, in the next age, he said, I'm going to teach my people what it means to be in Christ. Looking with his eyes, his ears, his heart. Like it? Mm -hmm. 